Jones. Kind of. <laughs> I'm looking. You're the pro. <laughs> He's a pro. Hey, welcome to the continuing winemaker series here at the Wine of the Month Club. And very excited because the Bunshu family has been around the wine business forever. And try to say that fast three times. Like my, you know, was that commercial? Well, my, my sixth grade uh, elementary school slogan for president was vote for Bunshu or he'll punch you. Um, but all the seventh that's graders, like, oh, the they all came and pounded on me, though, and oh, said, the, what are you going to do? <laughs> did, the question is, did you win? Of course. Oh, yeah, I awesome, always win, right? but uh, it, it took a little, it took no, a little really funny. ballot box stuff. That is really funny. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, things haven't changed. All right, this is Jeff Bunshu, and uh, we were talking a little bit about wine history and stuff, and, and we were talking about how my dad started the clubs and yeah. the idea of wine clubs right. in 1972, and I said, when did Gunlock Bunshu start? And you said... You said 1858. 1858. So in Sonoma, that must have in been one Sonoma. of the... It was uh, the second. The first winery was uh, founded by Agus and Harris in 1856 called uh, Buena Vista that you may know the brand. Yeah, Harris. That winery sort of sold a million times. This, ours managed to stay in our family ever since and still goes strong up in Sonoma just wow. a couple miles off the plaza up there. It's great wines. And Harris, what was it? Her he has a very storied background about he, Yes, he does. You know? <laughs> he, uh, you know, he he was actually, he's credited with founding, really, California Viticulture. Correct. Yeah. But he uh, he was really only in California for, I think, well less than a decade and maybe even a lot less. And he had his winery for two years before he ran into a little bit of trouble and went off to Nicaragua. Right, yeah, The legend exactly. has it he got eaten by an alligator. Yeah, they never found him, and they sent somebody after him, and that's they couldn't right. find that guy they either. So, find like, him. you know, the alligator was full, I think. Yeah, that that's exactly so, right. But didn't he bring, like, cuttings to America, to California from... Uh, he did. He went, back, he went back and got a bunch of cuttings that he planted, and a lot of, you know, it's... I don't know, I don't know that it's a direct lineage, but he gets a lot of the credit for bringing Zinfandel right, to California. Right, that's right, yeah, Zinfandel. Yeah. So, so then Bunchu starts, and uh, we've been, I've been to the wineries years ago, and uh, you have your own brands as well. Yeah, as, so uh, I, I run Gunlock Bunchu up there, but today what I came down to talk about was a separate wine company that I run called Blue Nomad. Um, Blue we do Nomad. Blue Nomad. We do, uh, my wife and I uh, spent over a year hitchhiking around the world and spent a lot of time in North Africa where there were some nomads that wore blue turbans. Wow, so really cool. So we named cool. it Blue Nomad after sort of the, where Gunlock Bunchy was 100% estate driven, all about what we grow on the site, what we can do when you kind of have generations in the same dirt. Yes. Um, that's one focal point of what the wine business is about and really the one that is the core of what our family's about. But in the interest of wanting to spread my wings a bit uh, and take a whole different approach, Blue Nomad is about kind of flavor-driven driven wines, mm -hmm. wines that have a little more to do with what the mouthfeel and the, mouth, the palate impression is as opposed to where they're actually from. So it's important that these wines have a pedigree from I can name the vineyards and where, where they're, what, what they're on about, but they're selected more from the flavor they add mm -hmm. to the blend than they are because they came from any particular vineyard. Well, that's interesting because we, we I love the wines. Yeah. We featured one of them actually in the club. Um, but the 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 Bunshu properties, this stuff is sourced this stuff from all is over. All over. Well, yeah. Sonoma County, in the case of the red, um, uh, and uh, the 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 bright light is from Sonoma County, and also the white is from uh, Monterey County. And what it really is is an attempt for us. We 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 definitely put a lot into our estate wine at Gunlock Bunshu. It costs a lot to do it. And, uh, and we, we have to charge what we charge, even though we still think they're a value. This allows us to kind of go out and also keep pricing the, mm -hmm. in mind when yeah, we make it. So, and it, so uh, my partner, our, our Keith Emerson, who's the winemaker, the, our goal is to bring something legitimate, which for us is in wine is determined by kind of an acid level and a structure, maybe a dryness, um, to a, a price point that's pretty pretty. Uh, pretty aggressive, at least in the context of where we normally live. Um, so, should we start? Yeah, how, um, I want to ask another question. How did you find a wife that would go you know, um, to where Blue Nomad's are? <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> you know, she uh, she wasn't my wife at the time. And, oh, all right, so you guys. Uh, she 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 sort of. We always joke. We got our first five years of marriage done in that in that trip in two um, years. That was great. Yeah. That was a good job. <laughs> uh, we, that's exactly right. Uh, so the other thing about these wines, if you note the labels. Uh, What's inside is serious. What's outside also is kind of a serious uh, nod to a passion that I have, which is what's called lowbrow art. 
Like the, the biggest example of low, low brow art out there is Shepard Ferry. If you've ever seen all those Obama posters in the oh, yeah, right, yes. Um, he there's a whole zone Great. of art that's kind of based mm -hmm. in street art that I've been a fan of for a long time, and I love the idea of bringing some of that to bear on really art-driven labels. So each of the labels, you'll see this one, and we'll get to the red in a second. Our handpicked the artist, um, uh, Andrea Von Bujos did this. She's mm -hmm. a Started out as a graffiti artist in New York City or Brooklyn that then went wow. to the Parsons School of Design and became an editor at XXL. And she jumped on the chance to do this. The, the really way cool. It, it's pretty cool. It, it's called Bright Light because of the bright flavors in the wine. Yeah, um, tons of stuff in there. I, I, I get some, what, Viognier? Or I get yeah, some... well, it's actually the secret blend that is not oh, so secret because I'm going to tell the whole universe right, um, of uh, Gewürztraminer that's picked. A little bit underripe yep. for high acid and a little bit less of the lychee character. Um, Albarino, which brings a really bright, vibrant, fresh fruit Love that component. Yep. Um, and then uh, a little Chardonnay to round out the mouthfeel. Because it's got it's, the dimension of this wine is great. It's just mm -hmm. these flavors keep coming out as you taste them, as they sort of evolve on your palate. It is really good. Yeah, this is really meant to be like a chill down. Let me taste that again. Chill down, kind of cool down wine in the backyard. Or, uh, it's you know it's it's something that uh, it just goes pretty well out. I think of it being outside, mm -hmm. um, you know, in weather like we've been having lately. Fruit impressions are great. Not I mean the RS has got to be very low. Very hands. low. It's very crisp and refreshing, and that's kind of the deal. It's not it's not a kind of a muscat base kind of flavor no. profile. It's right. it's a little bracing. So, um, but you know what we like about that is it just is completely refreshing. Relatively low alcohol, so you, it doesn't knock you over with one glass. Um, well, that's uh, a problem. No. <laughs> that's right. Very good. Really good, really good. Okay. I had, that one I had not tasted prior to this. Yeah, thank you. Okay, number two is uh, Rockus Bacchus. This is kind of the anchor of Blue Nomad right now. We have a Pinot and some other stuff in the works. But Rockus Bacchus is a, it's a red blend, which are all the rage right now. Um, a, um, it's primarily Zinfandel and Cabernet, but there's also a little Merlot and a little Petit Verdot. Excuse me, I think I walked off there. It's primarily uh, Zinfandel with a little Merlot um, I, and Petit I, Verdot. Uh, I flipped over this and we featured it. I'm talking about here. I know women go through all the time. We fix that. Um, this is Zin with the primary Zin. Uh, it's it's mostly Zin, but I mean, but I only say mostly. It's just over fifty percent. Um, mm -hmm. Which is the way it starts. Mm -hmm. Then you get all the other things going on right, you know, toward the mid palate. Mm. This, this is great. It's a, you know, it's a meaty wine. It, you know, it tends to be that that the, that uh, it's got structure, acidity, but it's round in the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know, it's meant to be kind of a, a a good typical red wine in body and weight, but not be hitting you over the head. With I like get a little it. dark chocolate in there. Just really yep. fun berry flavors. So yeah, it's gonna do well. It's an 08, still just yeah. Really it's doing good. Well. It'll age. It, it does well. It's a really fun label. This is uh, this is Bacchus. Uh, envisioned as a combination of Jack Black and uh, Questlove, two, <laughs> two people down there. You know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Bacchus as in God of Wine, as in God of Wine. Yeah, so you see, if you get, if you look close enough, it's got his, he's got his chalice, funny. but he's also got his groupies. That is so really you, you funny. Got, you've got to like that too. Well, I got to show you one of my labels. Here. I think maybe you'll get a kick out. This is the Peter Max thing I did. Oh, cool! A painted van. Uh, oh, check that out. And yeah. yeah, you want to hear something? See that? That's fun. License plate. Wood stick. Woodstock. Woodstock. Okay. Look at that. But the feds asked me. They, they wouldn't approve it. They said, we want to know what that means. They go, they wrote back and said, we don't understand what this means. I'm like, it means Woodstock. They go, oh, yeah, okay, you can do it. They're thorough. And <laughs> that's, <funny. laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'll say. That, that's partially probably what turned me on to the labels yeah. here when we first brought them in. I thought these are really cool. Yeah, I well, that's awesome. Style. You know, um, plus you can't get a, a label, a, a name approved that's got ridge or oak or anything in it, right? No. It just doesn't happen no. anymore, right? So no, it great. doesn't. It's fun. Yeah, we have a good time. We have a, the other little thing we have going on up at the winery is I'm always in passionate independent music. So we end up kind of, we do an indie rock concert up at our winery. Oh, great. Um, this is a, a wine that we give to a lot of the artists when they're coming through. Well, um, we have some of this in stock, and we would love to have you folks come down and taste it with us or head up to Bunshu uh, Winery, yeah. Gunlock Bunshu, and what's going on up there? Do you have a tasting room? Uh, we have a tasting room at Gunlock Bunshu, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's in Sonoma. It's a couple miles off the plaza. It's kind love of a, Sonoma. it's a great low key experience with uh, that can get pretty hectic on the weekends in terms of a lot of people there, but it's pretty fun. You know, they're all jammed into a hundred and fifty year old building, um, so it gets a little raucous. 
Uh, but it's a blast, and we have a good time. You know, but the... Um Sonoma, I love Sonoma because yeah. it's just still pretty rural. It's yeah. still got that rural character. It's not the Napa downtown, you know, yeah. San Alina thing. And that when we come up, we, that's where we want to be. So we will come see you. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank Pleasure you so much. Thank camera, you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay. See you next time.